G'day, Lockie here. On today's OSS unboxing, we're going to take a look at Heptio Gimbal. So I was excited to dig into this project. I think it was released a little over a week ago um, and understand how it works. So I'm going to do my best to keep it short and sweet, but also show you a little bit about Heptio Gimbal and how it works. Now, uh, if you haven't heard of Gimbal, um, Gimbal aims at creating kind of an edge unified ingress. So the use case that they call out here um, is having uh, an OpenStack cluster and a Kubernetes cluster side by side and having a unified ingress point. Um, and, and it's really interesting to kind of tie together. I've built a pretty nice uh, POC to try to demonstrate the value of um, Gimbal. So let's just dig into a few things here and, and I think it's important just to give you some high level on the docs. Um, so I'm in the docs on the open source repo. So here's kind of the data flow. So we have the internet in the top coming into a layer three, layer four load balancer um, via way of Kubernetes uh, service type load balancer or cluster IP. Then we hit a fleet of um, Contour ingress controllers, which um, Contour is another uh, Heptio project and under the covers there is Envoy. So um, we have a fleet of uh, contour ingress controllers on a cluster called the gimbal cluster. Then we have these backend clusters. Now in this example, we have a, an OpenStack cluster um, and they cite in their blog as to the use case they were building for um, and a backend Kubernetes cluster. Now for this demo, I've actually built two backend Kubernetes clusters to show you how it will work. So we have a gimbal cluster, we have one Kubernetes backend cluster and in place of this OpenStack, I have another backend Kubernetes cluster. Um, and in terms of architecture here, we have a couple of different namespaces. I'll get into it in a minute. So uh, Gimbal Contour on the Gimbal cluster. So that's actually what's laying down Contour with the Envoy ingress controllers on the edge. Um, then we have Gimbal Discovery where we run a process for the Kubernetes discoverer and we actually mount in a cube config to tell it how to talk to the Kubernetes API. Um, and I'll show you how all this works and get into it. We also have, they've wrapped up some really nice monitoring there via Prometheus and Alert Manager and Grafana. I'm not going to go into that, but you can go through it. So if you want to follow at home after this, I think the easiest way is just to go into deployment here. Deployment docs are nice there. I have modified them a little bit for uh, my POC here to demonstrate it, but you should be able to follow along at home pretty easily. Okay, so let's go over to the terminal here. Okay, so at the top, I have three terminals. Top is gimbal cluster, middle is cluster two, which is my first Kubernetes backend cluster, and cluster zero three is my second Kubernetes backend cluster. Now, in terms of namespace, I'm just gonna expand this terminal. Um, in terms of namespaces here, we have gimbal contour. So, uh, get pods on gimbal contour. So this is the fleet of ingress controllers on that edge cluster we have up and running here. So we have two, I have a two node, I think it's a daemon set. So we have a daemon set there. Gimbal discovery. So I have two discoverer processes running, each mounting in a cube config as a secret. Secret that defines, so there's a cube config for cluster two and a cube config for cluster three. They mount them in respectively. That tells them how to get to the Kubernetes API and actually watch um, services and endpoint creation. Um, and the other thing we have is gimbal monitoring. I'm not gonna go into that in this kind of unboxing, but there's a whole monitoring stack and it's, it's really nicely done. Um, so if you're interested in taking a look at that, the docs are there. Okay, so moving right along here, what I'm gonna do is, is minimize this window and kubectuttle get pods in the namespace gimbal this uh, discovery. And I'm going to grab this cluster two Kubernetes discoverer. Cube cuddle. I want to have a look at the logs here just to show you what's happening as I do things. Okay. So they're logs from me working on this cluster before. Now I have a demonstration workload here. Let me have a look. Bringing it back up. Hopefully you can see this. So we have a deployment here of um, card and engine X. So a deployment and a corresponding service. I'm just going to deploy them to show you um, that. Cube cuddle apply dash F example deployment. 
Okay, so what this has done is create two deployments and two services. Um, corresponding there, so kubectl get service endpoint pod. This is on cluster two. We can see we have a card service, an Nginx service, endpoints attached, and two running pods received. If we pop back up to the gimbal cluster, remember we have the discoverer there. I was telling the discoverer that's monitoring cluster two. It says, hello, I have a service, an endpoint, a service and an endpoint, and I'm going to update those endpoints once the endpoints are attached. So it's watching service and endpoints in this cluster. Now, one thing that is really interesting, cube cuddle on the gimbal get service. We can actually see that I have a card cluster two and an Nginx cluster two. And if I do a service and an endpoint, I can actually see I have corresponding endpoints. And those endpoints actually correspond to these endpoints down here. Now this raises a very interesting point. You need to have routability between your pod IPs in, in each of the clusters. So your Envoy uh, Contour ingress controllers are going to attach these services and corresponding endpoints as their back end services. So you need to be able to route from the pod IP of each of the contours through to the pod IP on a cluster two of the pod running Nginx and card. This is how the routing works today. So in my setup, I've actually deployed three Kubernetes clusters using ACS Engine on Azure, and they're all actually in the same VNet, so the same network topology. So routing therefore works between all the pod IPs, even though I have disparate clusters. Just calling that out. Um, so you can see what's essentially happening is this discoverer is mirroring the clusters and making them accessible, their services in cluster two and suffixing them with the name of the cluster. Um, we can go in and actually have a look at this as well. Kubernetes get service um, and we'll do a output YAML. You can actually see that this has been annotated as such as well because the discoverer has discovered that service and brought it up into this service. Now, the interesting last mile here is we can create an ingress resource as well. And because we have access to those services and those endpoints from the gimbal cluster, this edge ingress cluster, I can actually create ingress resources and, and push them back. So I'm going to create a host called Nginx cluster two and push it back to the service Nginx cluster two, which you know actually sits on a different backend Kubernetes cluster. Same with cluster three. I haven't actually deployed that. Same with card here that I've done two and three. Okay, now to demonstrate um, this kind of workflow, kubectl get pods, I have actually applied that ingress already, so I'll just show you that, get ingress and dash o yaml. So I've created a single unified ingress, I have multiple Kubernetes clusters on the back end, this is the value, um, and I've called out these different host names, cluster two, host cluster three. Okay, now on cluster three, I haven't actually deployed any of these apps right now. Right, these demo apps. I'm gonna pop over to my tab on the right here. What I'm gonna do is just create a port forward so that I can enact some inbound traffic and show you the routing. What I'm doing here is just grabbing um, one of the contour pods and putting a port forward through to port 80. So hitting the contour ingress controller on one of them. So open up a port forward here so that I can hit it from localhost. So I'm gonna do a curl here. Curl, I'm gonna pass through a host header in HTTP and I'm gonna hit localhost on port 9000 because I've already opened that port forward. Now what I would expect to happen here, kubectl logs dash F, okay, so I'm looking at the log of that, I should get routed through. Okay, I did indeed hit that Nginx controller from the gimbal cluster, routed through to backend Kubernetes cluster name cluster two. You can see that traffic has indeed hit there. Okay, I have not deployed nginx.cluster3, we'll prove that. We only have cluster two. I'm gonna hit, I would expect a service unavailable because I have it there. I do, I get a 503 back. Let me go and do an apply here. I'm going to apply the service and the deployment. I would expect on this cluster now that I have a corresponding three on both. I can do a corresponding 
curl. Let me grab the logs here. Okay, tailing the log file. I hit cluster three, you can see that there right now. If I go back and hit cluster two, hit cluster two, and I hit cluster three. So we have a unified ingress, even though we have the same Kubernetes backend. If you do not have Kubernetes backends, obviously I'm building a demo for this. For example, OpenStack, there is a discoverer for OpenStack as well that will pull these services out and push them into Kubernetes and attach them to Contour. Or other backends, um, I think in the documentation or the blog I read, things like EC2, so native um, load balancers, something along those lines. Um, it would also be really interesting in the future, uh, we have an ingress controller here, to have multiple backends and do some load balancing there, right? So we can have hot cold, we can have one ingress platform, one ingress cluster to manage all of our Kubernetes cluster, much very similar to kind of federation, um, to have feder a federated service across multiple um, service backends. So that is, um, that's it, that's kind of, Heptio gimbal in a nutshell. Um, I hope I did it justice. It was kind of more of a complicated demo to put together and do an unboxing on it. Um, but pop over to GitHub slash Heptio slash gimbal to take a look. And obviously you can hit up the Heptio folks on Twitter or any other means. They're very responsive. Um, and it's been absolutely my pleasure to unbox this software. So thank you very much, Heptio, and cheers.